Hello and welcome back to the Outer Worlds with your three laws into the mat. Okay, yeah, the door's over there. Talk to Chester or Higgins. We had our fun. Okay, we can, we can open that door. By the way, where's our mechanical friend? Who knows? Let's pick this lock. I guess we could really do with a little bit of another level. So I think it's wise to assume that my next choice for what to upgrade will indeed I can just destroy that now. Will indeed be what you call it. That's right. <laughs> my staff abilities. Mind the theme, you're liable to get scalded. Thanks. But this game is on Apex. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just being a doofus. Okay. Oh, this is the same corridor. Shut off steam release valves. I think that's what Epic's trying to do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, enough about that. <laughs> uh. Okay. Just a spoiler, I bought this game of Humble and I'm okay with that. And... And I don't really mind the whole... I think it's just also not my concern. There's our repaired mechanical scout. If there's been any combat around, I think he sort of handled the time mess, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Haven't they? Hey, hey, pal! What's your pronouns? Hey. Mechanicide protocols currently active. Please do not interrupt. Okay, I should just call you Mechanicide then. That's fine. So if I had killed this Mechanicide young friend. I would be short an ally on this. In fact, I would probably have to kill things. But currently, it seems to me that everything's already dead. Okay, that's the final terminal thingy. This connects up to the very beginning, and this connects up to this room here. Right. Right, 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 right. And I think I loot. Looked around the bottom part properly enough that we can now go ahead and give some power to our friends over. Blast. I'm not sure what the right is. All I know is the position's final. Right, we still have to use the terminal to do that. God damn you! Well, uh, if I'm lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. I don't think I... I still won't get enough stealth skills of everything because I didn't keep any of those we'll this, things. Okay, well, let's check our journal. Die robot needs us to do what? Retrieve a logic module. Ah. Okay, so before we do that... Hey, mister. Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I wouldn't mind hearing your opinion. I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. 
They don't deserve to be punished. The Zutus are our community. I can't destroy what they built. Miss McDevitt's built something beautiful. Somehow she's talked the ground into giving life again. It's plain to see she's made the veil a better place. Fed the hungry, tended the sick. Gave a home to those that had none. But Miss McDevitt delights in Edgewater suffering. She wants to hurt the town. Do you really want to be party to that kind of hatred? Why do you want me to actually like Edgewater? Because I don't. I see your point. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. That's fair. I'm glad you did. I like hearing from you. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I... No one's ever told me those words in that order. Yeah, didn't I loot this? No. I did, but then I died. Where's the head of security? The head of security went down somewhere, right? Hi, buddy! He went, or she went, I don't know. Welcome myself down here, just trying to gather my courage. Can I make a mad dash for the control room? Okay, well, the control room. Was over this way. Right? There we go. Because, honestly, redirecting power is important and all, but so is finishing other quest lines. Different parts, a train at time. A Treno. Corrupted logic module. And more magnets. Great. Well. I think it is time to return to Ludwig there. What's this? Right, those are all like go to the Zerta kind of things. Well, I'm sort of hoping, though I'm not sure if my hope is entirely justified, that the people of Edgewater can also get a home in the place. Bring us honor, soldier. You mentioned the logic module. I found one in the geothermal plant. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, well, that reminds me. Got to look into getting us a uniform. So this is it then, the key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by. Take care. Okay, but what I want, I wanted more stealth, didn't I? Because of reasons. Oh, and th that puts our hack skill as far as we can develop it immediately. Hmm. Can I increase engineering separately already? So, is it like as soon as one skill hits 50, I can stop putting skills in the main slot? Like, have I been wasting skills? skill points by doing that but technically not because it still increased at least one of the skills that we needed to and that's fine all right let's go and redirect the power i'm sorry barvati but if i have the option to give in to communism we have to give in to communism you know that right That's excessive, but... Okay. Blatant disregard for spaces choice property has been locked. That's fine. I hope you're okay. I can't stop thinking on Edgewater, Captain. 
I'm glad the deserters are gonna be all right now they got power, but what about the town? All those people. The dog data. Uh, I'm gonna have to see about that, won't I? Map, 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 map. Region, 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 region. I cannot fast travel from this location. Is that so? Is that because Paramati wants to talk to me some more? Or will I be ambushed outside? Can I fast travel now? Yes. Okay. I wonder how... How well loved we are now by the various people. Oh, apparently I'm supposed to return to Reed first, but then... Uh, hey! You hear that? That low, pleasant hum of electricity? It whispers across the veil like the winds of change. You've done well. I would have paid my last five bits to see the look on Reed's face when the last lamp in town burnt out and the cannery fell to silence. What happens now? Time's come to look toward the future. We'll grow, I expect. A lot of workers out there with nowhere else to go. And a lot more mouths to feed. Not as many as you'd think. We're not about to let the whole town join our flock. Just the ones willing to renounce their corporate loyalties and live the way nature intended. I am curious. Why did you help us? You don't know who we are. You don't owe us a thing. The plant's crawling with mechanicals, so it stands to reason you risked your life. Between your camp at Reed's Canary, yours is the better way of life. You're not quite like anyone else I've met. You haven't had your consciousness programmed by the board. You're welcome among us if you're ever so inclined. Thanks. You are welcome here. I should go. I'm going to assume that in our character reputation. Space's choice loves me. <laughs> Space's choice also sort of doesn't love me that much. That's fine. I am not an employee. But Thomas Thomas kiss. Thomas. Hey hey hey. Any luck finding one of those manuals? Here we go. Today is your lucky day. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? Well, you have one and two, so let's take a guess. The Lucy Part Three. Someone stashed away inside the old geothermal plant. The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. Thank you. I want to ask you something. What's on your mind? Fuck all. Thank you. Honestly, that's sort of how my brain works, isn't it? There's fuck all on my mind. Ooh, a hatchet. Ooh, and a shock stick. Hmm. That's a one-handed melee weapon. I'm gonna have to think on that one. Just a little bit. Namely, uh, Parvati, what's your hammer like? 142, this is 131. Never mind. Your hammer is fine. Okay, so... Our next stop on this here planet should be to tell Grace that uh, we got Zoe back. Right. Hey. What is it? I talked so into coming back. We didn't always get along, but I'm glad to know she's safe. 
What happened anyway? Uh, she joined up with a band of marauders to hunt her. Zoe joined up with a band of marauders. Zoe, the same Zoe who doesn't know a barrel from a trigger. Well, I've heard stranger things. You pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you. I leave you. Also, I wonder if uh, so is back yet. Hey, buddy. Zoe says she fought her way out of a marauder camp with her own bare hands. Fresh off the limb, and that includes canid meat. Yeah, I think I think what you said is okay. Like I won't go as far to. Well, I won't go as far as to say that, but that's fine. Did you hear a sheep? Or was that your barmati? Or was it this fine cock? Can I talk to the cock? I really want to talk to the cock. There's the option to talk to the cock, but it doesn't really do anything. Hey. Something you need? We'll talk later. Okay, let's go and face the music. Hmm. Yeah. It is time for consequences. As it's consequential as they may be. Hey, how are we doing? I can't possibly cut anyone's hair in the dark. I should go. Space's choice. So you, they've got some emergency power left. Doors are properly sealed and all. Hey. Power's gone. Law knows how long. Looking to get drunk? Just look like shutting. Go ahead. You asked me about myself. Suppose I did. Ready to talk about it? But I already did. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. What's there to figure out? Stands to reason you work for a company. You ain't Spacer's choice. Could be you're with Auntie Cleo. I don't work for any company. There's more to life than the company I work for. That's exactly the kind of crazy talk that comes from an overabundance of sobriety. Well, good luck trying to figure yourself out. Sounds like you'll need it. So much for small talk. Uh, we'll get you mostly drunk at half the price. Spacer's choice. Yeah, I want you to go join the deserters. Ah, uh, no, this one is sealed as well. I don't remember if I actually ever lockpicked this. Hmm. So my options for thievery might be limited. Hey. Edgewater's experiencing what we in the profession like to call a quandary. How am I supposed to file a report with the power dead? Not my concern. Well, no, I'm... Like... For the most of these people, I'm not happy about what I did, but I also... Would prefer to not have... You want to know what gets my bile churning? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters. Plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? It's not personal, I need your power regulator. That power regulator is company property. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you. Call off your guards, I don't want them bleeding all over my power regulator. All right, easy now. Let's not do anything we'll regret. I'll order my guards to stand down. Take what you came for and then leave us be. Stand down, all of you. We're done here. I 
papá. Well, yeah. I mean, the town was dying anyway. Would have been just one more uh, order from corp corporate and. You and I have got nothing more to say to each other. That's fair enough. Who's that? Is Reed hiding in there? Mr. Thompson is aware of your concerns and remains committed to guiding Edgewater into prosperity. Hey. Got my hands full at the moment. Make it quick, please. Goodbye. All right, how are you? Where are we headed? Space, I think. Yeah. So that seems like space. Oh, and we have skill perks. Skill descent perks available. That's the one. So I can't use this button anymore because engineering is completely separate from... Because I have two skills at 50 already. So if I got the, this to a similar point where... But this will get to 50 at exactly the same moment. But, but you get what I mean. Yeah. That's fine. Render prices, base health, or... What do we want? More to high maintenance? Sure. Request five previous perks. Okay. So that's gonna take a bit. I wonder what the max level in this is. Also I wonder about how Silas will be. Because Silas certainly does not seem like bad people. Well, apparently we had not discovered this part of the cemetery. Lifetime net value, 8,112 bits. That's a good thing to have on your gravestone. How much money you made for your company. Hmm. Nice. Or was it how much you've been paid over your life? How you doing? Don't see the sense in all this fussing over the power. Cannery shutting down just means I'll have more bodies to bury. See you around, but you ha Yeah, you have your work cut out for you, don't you? Fairness, if they get the like, there's a lot of uh, abandoned buildings around that could take up. Oh, hello! It seems to me like some people were hoping to set up an ambush. For whom I don't know. My poor legs, probably. In fairness, I never actually walked down this road, so this this ambush might have been here since the beginning. And they've just been waiting for me ever since. We have battles. Nice. Gotta love some good space ores. your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome! Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine. Belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but... That don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. 
You've never been on a ship before? I've worked on the occasional supply coach in need of repairs. Once I built a little model craft out of spare parts, but Mr. Thompson found out and I had to take it apart. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? I'd be glad to have you along. Pick a cabin, it's yours. Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Yep. I wonder if Max is already aboard as well. Yeah, he is. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. I could spend hours reflecting on the secret workings of the universe. Little else in this colony offers such a relaxing pastime. So, tell me what's on your mind. I excel at confessional listening. Uh, tell me again about the book we picked up that's in French. Bocconu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Uh, any ideas where we can find someone who sp speaks French in this colony? I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Only one guy in this whole colony that can translate French? The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. <laughs> Point taken. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. How is it that a simple vicar happens to be such a highly skilled hacker? Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. How will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Sounds good. Let's go. Thank you, Captain. Okay. Let me go and plant the thing, or should I talk to Ada? Apparently, meant to talk to Ada. Captain, I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. That's grim. What can I do for you, Captain? I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. I'll be back. Okay, so we shall... To have our maiden flight? I guess. Mm. Look at those fumes. Read them in. Actually, don't read this. Are our doors open now? I don't know. Also, do full damage from that. That's unexpected. Hello, hello. What can I do for you, Captain? I've installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. 
I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Yeah. Battle away! By which I mean we have battles. We have small little battles on our ship. It's... We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Good. I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying! The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, <laughs> find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the ground breaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Why do we need a nav key to land on a planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kalkelly. What's stopping me from just leaving Halcyon altogether? Without a skip drive? Good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. About this Gladys person, how do I know I can trust her? Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Can't I land somewhere outside Stellar Bay? In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And, in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. Fine, I'll go have a word of Gladys. Excellent, I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. You want to explain what the Holographic Shroud is? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned this thing as limitations? Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. 
Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Why do you need a gadget for this? Couldn't they just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Oh, the hell does hologram sweeten your breath? Science, that's how. <laughs> well done. Oh, I will put it to good use, thanks. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it. And that's that thing. Lucky. I fucked shit up over there. Nice. Not entirely intentionally, mind you. Like there's some shit I most certainly did not want to fuck up. But that's just what happens, isn't it? Oh, and here's my bed. Here's my pin, here's my terminal, and here's my holographic shroud. Ooh. That's handy. And that's 19,000 XP. That's nice. Photons unread messages from you, Bedford. Oh, I forgot to mention in my previous message, silly me. I'm mailing you a copy of my favorite serial, The Space Adventures of Singularity Steel. It's about a dashing space pirate with a heart of well steel. It's not exactly board approved, so don't you go showing it around to your spacer buddies. I hope it will amuse you while you're not while you're out adventuring. Any similarities to certain someone are entirely intentional. Ah. Hawthorne's archive messages. Dearest Alex, I can't tell you how pleased I am to finally hear from you. Your message was hilarious. I'm delighted by your sense of humor at the tale of your hijinks. I hope your terminal will cooperate for the foreseeable future. By the way, I was scraping Crowdbreaker Scum's network for tasty little bits and I noticed you declined to dock at the Edgewater's landing pad and instead touched down in the wilderness. You rugged individualist, you. Never pray that idiot Thompson wasn't giving you any trouble. Anyway, I hope your meeting down on Terra 2 bros fruitful and I look forward to corresponding with great regularity. Your best friend, Yudam. Alex, because I don't know where you were raised, but it has it to guess it may have been a barn because anyone with even a modicum of decent reading would know it's unforgivably rude to ignore the odd and sincere messages of one's friends. Best Yudam, please respond. Hello, hello. I hope this finds you well. It was a pleasure to see you in my office again last week. Once again, I'm terribly sorry about the impounding things up. How could it have happened the second time? Tell me, these days I swear, dreadful and revival, haha, <laughs> just like your ship. I hope you're given some thought on th that thing we discussed, you know, about the Wells fellow. I'm so sorry to press, but I have the strangest tickling feeling that you really do know him. And if you could just tell me where he is, well, it would be marvelous for our friendship, wouldn't it? Looking forward to seeing you again, main man, your dear friend, Udom. Hello, Udom here, Udom Bedford. We met when I accidentally impounded your ship. My silly fat finger is embarrassing me once again. I hope that wasn't too terribly inc inconvenient for you. It was such a pleasure for me, and I tremendously appreciate your forbearance in not throttling me. You really are quite the gentleman. If you're ever in ground break as a space, well, space, space, please don't hesitate to look me up. The last hope, so Spectrum Vodka, perhaps we could try every color, you know, really dive one on. Let me know, your new friend, Udom. Oh no, Udom is gonna talk to me, isn't he? Log entry 1, Shrink Ray. Note to self, remember this later, no better. Ada, remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada, not if I'm dead. Why would you even ask me that? Back to my point. I saw in actuality with my own two eyes a sublime powerful weapon in Velas' lab, just sitting there for the taking. If the grey hair were to look away or forget about it, maybe. Or if I had asked the switch more nicely. 
called it a shrink ray, but would let me test the claim after I lost my temper. Said was it was inspired to create a thing by the achievements of other scientists who dared to push the boundaries of human knowledge and decency laws. I had heard rumors of fantastical weapons like this one, weapons that push the boundaries of the mind and science cutting edge, science is cutting edge, but I figured they were just stories to be honest, laying their eyes on Wells' shrink ray first hand. It's enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more to the rumors. What to be had? The last time I got sloshed, I mean... I was imbibing at the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. Look, Udom was really free with the drinks. He seems like an okay fellow. I'm seriously put sub... Uh, but subtly eavesdropped on two moderates yammering on about a mad scientist some years back who'd claimed he'd made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony. Like, none of us had heard that one before, but here's the good part. The mother said that the mad scientist kept yelling about the hammer's power or something similar. A strange weapon with special power created by Crazy Lab Code? Sure fits the bill. It could be another one of the weapons that inspired Wells. Why, why, why won't Wells just give it the shrink rate to me? Blast into the depths of the labyrinth and Tartarus and back. Let the record show, I did apologize for shutting him down five times, but argue that to be damned, it's just sitting there neglected and gathering dust. I should have commandeered it and thanked him without asking permission or uh, breaking expensive equipment when he said it wasn't ready yet and that even if it were, he couldn't trust it to someone like me. What does that even mean, I asked? That I'm not trustworthy enough? That I use it to wipe out the good, hardworking folks of the colony like some sort of moral psycho? I'll admit to maintaining some questionable associations, but I follow a strict code of me, myself and mine. What's not respecting that? Exactly. Now I have to wait until Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meanwhile, I have been tracking down additional rumors pertaining to other of these science weapons throughout Halcyon. If gossip holds true, my next stop will be checked with the black market merchants on the ground, Perica, and in Fallbrook. Well, uh, the problem with... Uh, what should we call it? Groundbreaker is that apparently someone there knows Alex Hawthorne. Hi, Sam. There's no response from the mechanical unit. The serial number etched in its chassis includes the Sam. Okay. Pleasure to meet you, Sam. This is not a Petunia. But its name is Petunia. That's fine. The book is heavily dog eared with doodles on the margins. Is this. Whose room is this? Whom am I robbing? First wrench that ever, that ever gave me, she's been a friend ever since. Oh. Full of modified tools with unique mechanical usages, sticking around in here would be an easy way to lose a finger to a sword toothed blade. I'm robbing Parvati. Did not intend to do that. Stern older man with four eyes. Aww. Parvati, I stole your drugs. Oh. Parvati, we have a leak. <laughs> She's not a plumber, I right know. Because this room is currently not. Shaped up. It smells suspiciously like iceberg aged whiskey. Index of bandage, various qualifying considerations, principle and rules of restrictive management, morals and maxims of banning unethical literature, proof of the grand architect and predestination, and refutation of the titles listed here within, consequences to mind and the will of man who le when led astray, official list of banned titles, prerequisite for advancing the investigation, outing and penalizing the offenders. So I'm gonna assume that uh, where's my quest items? Oh, does not grant any privileges or authority whatsoever. Ah, oh, so it would not have helped. Okay, well you have those for trading cards. In mint condition, was this card to represent players from the Hephaestus Hammers and the Tilebackers? Impossible to put down order of the art and science of Dospor. Order of scientific inquiry, office of literature. This endorsement has been approved. Don't take Leo Starlings, signed by Seymour Whitlock, who held the record for most on the field fatalities for three conse consecutive seasons. Hey, I'm gonna steal all your ammo, okay? Good buddy. Good friend. Good pal. 
The channel of Maximilian de Soto, Volume 1, the scribblings on this channel pages are utterly illegible to anyone except Vicar Maximilian de Soto. <laughs> and Doctrinal Studies 539 of Equity and Equations. These textbooks have been out of print for almost half a century. The margins are filled with scribbled notes and many passages have been underlined. Some pages have come loose, the glue now yellowed and cracked along the spines. So that's multiple tomes. As always, I am at your disposal. So, tell me what's on your mind. I excel at confessional listening. We had other options to talk about. So... We career out of my crew, I off the ship. I'd like to know something about, who's those, um, about those I'm flying with. What's the story? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Violently enthusiastic disposition? Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. Uh, why were you so passionate about it? My parents, ironically. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them, regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. But weren't you proud when you became a vicar at least? They thought I was fighting the plan. Should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige. But that was not me. If you can't help but follow the plan, then everything you do is part of it, right? The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go... It's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. That seems quite trusting of you to just sign on without knowing anything about me. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. What if the book doesn't have the answers you're looking for? I honestly don't know what I'd do. This quest has consumed me for the better part of my life. I fear there's nothing else left to me. What about you? What's your story? I was a colonist of the Hope. A scientist named Wells saved me. And how did he do that? I... Uh, he stole my body from the Hope at the edge of the colony and told me out. Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? Now I'm helping him recover more of the chemicals he needs to save the rest of the colonists. That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Just because it's the right thing to do. A commendable attitude. Remind me, what are your thoughts of the philosophists? Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Uh, let's talk about this uh, personal quest of yours. Of course. Are you ready to break into security on the Groundbreaker? Remind me why we want to do that? If I can access the data cartridge from the terminal in security, I can easily hack into their arrivals and departures registry. That'll give us dates, times, and the crew manifests for every registered ship. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Okay. I have to think about it. Because that that's the option with leave conversation in it. Because it, there's quite a few rooms around. But <laughs> what does it give you? It gives you tetanus. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, there was a really rusty dragger in one of the D&D games I was in. The owner of which also called it a, a dagger of tetanus. 
Alright, so. Let's for about the hiding out. Danger room? <gasps> we have toilets! Can I have a shower now? No, there's no shower here. God damn it. It's been 70 or more years since I last had a shower. Oh, but what is here doing her thing? Immediately at work. Want to be a brand new you? Try out our respecification machine. Alex installed it himself. Right before he died. That can't be handy. But it's not the priority right now. The priority is to speak to Bravati. So hi, how are you doing? Sometimes I wonder about Mr. Hawthorne. What was he like? Why'd he make the computer a talkie? You think he got lonely, flying about on his own? What is, is that saying bye-bye? Uh, because no. You're part of my crew. Part of the ship, part of the crew, part of the crew, part of the ship, part of the ship. The other, what? Something along those lines. Okay, so we have some things here we can once again break down. And we'll do that. What's the difference between a, sh a spade as a higher. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep both the spade and the shovel just in case we find treasure. That's how that works, right? And we're gonna keep our hibernation suit because that's just that's like a a souvenir. Speaking of Wacker Max, what do you have? Perkwise, you got sneaky. Bonus support hack, regenerated base health. Yeah, let's give you that bonus hack. That sounds good. Also, what is what is your armor called? Vestments blue with piping. Hmm. I could. I should probably not steal those. But those seem really good. I want to put away my hibernation suit into into this container. You might want to consider changing your clothes more often. What? What do you mean? I just change. Are you saying I'm not allowed to just wander around in them? But no, it's not saying we can't wander around in it. Oh, okay, that takes me back to H water landing pad. I have a stinky, and I would, <laughs> I would be just a. Uh, Walking straight into space with that one. Hmm. You see, there's a few options. Independent orbital station in the remains of Halcyon's first colony ship, captained by Chunli Denison and run by descendants of the original crew. Okay, that's where we'll go. Destination. Reached the groundbreaker. Cool. Hey, Cap. Can we talk? Of course. Hey, Captain. I heard the groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson. What about her? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Sure, we could head over to engineering now. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Uh, no. Okay then. Uh, we're gonna go to the Groundbreaker next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it used to be the reliable. Gotcha, gotcha. Bye bye.